Hello and welcome to The Real Home Show. We're here every fortnight helping you to make your dream home a reality, whatever your budget. Coming up on this week's show, how to decorate with new neutrals, turning a bedroom into a bathroom, why it's worth working with a professional tiler, Instagram star Dee Campling shows us inside her beautiful living room, we've got a £1,000 armchair and footstool to give away, plus I've got my tips on the clearance sales you need to know about. Think neutral colours have to be boring? Well, we're going to spin our colour wheel now and show you why they're just as worthy of a space on your Instagrid as dark grey or dark blue. Stay tuned and we'll be helping homeowner Sarah create space for a new bedroom and bathroom. It's time for the part of the show where the colour wheel and I are joined by style expert, colour guru and potential poacher's prey, Anna Morley. <laughs> Right back at you, Laura. I'm, I'm a camouflage, so I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, not so. Yeah, okay. So last time we spun our wheel and we decided we were going to focus on greyish cashmere today. So yeah. tell me what this colour actually is that we're looking at. Well, there's a lot of it around, but there's these kind of washed, paired back neutrals. So we've got our linens, we've got our stony feels. An oatmeal, it's, uh, if you think about it, it's like a sandy kind of colour, an earthy tone, kind of like a warm grey, really. So how would you describe this colour in three words? Oh, I'd say it's warm, it's comforting, and it's simple. <laughs> it sounds like our video guy, Matt. A little bit, yeah. He can't retaliate, yeah. so let's say simple, yeah. warm. <laughs> so which colours does it work really well with? So you've got your creams, a lovely fawn colour, pale olives, looks gorgeous with it, and then mustard works really well. Now mustard, as we know, is you can use it as a neutral, and so it looks really nice with that skin. That actually does lift it a little. Uh, use it with a bit of gold or a bit of silver. Again, just kind of brings a little bit more elegance to it. So the other thing it goes really well with is black. So really, really dark charcoal grey or black. Makes it look really contemporary. And I'm not saying anything, Laura, but uh, check it out on the top. It, you can see the two colours actually do work really well together. It's a nice background to the pop of black. And are there any rooms in the house that it works particularly well in? It's a lovely colour. You can have it on your walls, you can have it in curtains, you can have it in accents, and it is obviously, it's a calming colour. You can have it throughout the house, but you really want it in a well-lit area, ideally. Really bring a nice warm glow to a room as the sun hits it. So beige can be a little bit, dare I say, it, boring. How do we stop greyish being boring? Obviously, back in the day, beige is all a bit bland, but no, not at the moment. We're bringing in lots of textiles at the moment. So think about all the rattan and basket weave and jute and sisal that's around. Just brings in some tactility to the room. Also, this black graphic lines, we've seen quite a lot of that. To use a nice, bold, contemporary colour or a statement light example against a, a backdrop of oatmeal or grage looks really good and really brings it up to now. So if I got up to £40 to spend and I want to bring a little bit of grage in, what should I buy? So around £40, I would probably go for a basket actually, because you can get them quite, you know, you can spend around that amount. And with one of those baskets, I mean the ones with the handles, you've probably seen them. Uh, Ikea do some great ones actually, really cheap. Um, Cox and Cox, a little bit more expensive for a pair. But you can get a couple of those, put a planter in, which is just a really nice way just to sort of hide a pot perhaps, and then bring some greenery in, so yet more kind of naturalness. If you've got a little bit more to spend, up to £150 maybe, what should we go for? So I have also just invested in one of these, but I've just got myself a really nice rug, kind of like a grazy oatmeal with a bit of a graphic pattern, which bizarrely, Laura, we've got one, we've got one just here. And doesn't it look great? Um, there's loads of these around at the moment, and there's a reason that so many people like them. They can really work in loads of different schemes. They're kind of interesting, but not overpowering. And if I really love greige and I want to invest in it, what should I buy? So I think if you've got a little bit more to spend, maybe go for a headboard, upholstered, it's in the bedroom, it's a space where you need to be calmed and relaxed. Obviously it's practical because you can lean against it, and it's, but it just kind of gives this expanse of this greige, this neutral, calming colour. You're always taking it into the bedroom. Can I get you out? We'll spin the wheel and then you can go back again. <laughs> Please do the honours, Anna. Love to. Ooh, are we calling that chocolate? Well, I'd lean towards walnut, Laura. Walnut, okay. Please don't bring any show and tell in next time because I am allergic. Okay. We'll be cracking on with that in the next episode. So if you'd like to know how to decorate with walnut, make sure you tune in. 
So what do you reckon? Have we persuaded you to come over to the light side? We'd love to see pictures of how you're decorating your home and you can share them with us on Instagram using the hashtag SoRealHomes. We're going to share our favourites on a future episode. Now it's time for our small space squad to help Sarah who wants to create a beautiful master suite and an extra bedroom. Stay tuned for my great clearance sale bargains. So here we are in the historic carpet town of Kidderminster and we're here to meet Sarah who's got a really lovely three bedroom detached house. So she needs our help, so she'll have a look. Let's go. So Sarah, you and Pepsi have been in the house for four years. Tell us why you've called us in. Um, so yeah, this is the first home that I've owned. Um, downstairs, I'm, I'm happy with it. It's been extended and I've got a kind of nice open plan kitchen diner. But ideally, I'd like to stay here long term. I can see myself having a family here. Um, but at the moment, it's a three bed house, one bathroom, not really set up for kind of family life. So I'd like to add another bedroom and ideally another bathroom as well. And what kind of budget have you got for the work? At the moment, I don't really know how much it's going to cost, so I'm hoping you guys can give me some pointers. Well, we'll do our best, so why don't we have a look upstairs? Well. Okay, so here we are upstairs, and obviously we've got your two main bedrooms, smaller front bedroom, and the family bathroom at the back as it is. Um, there's two options really, as far as I see it, to create that extra space that you need. No escaping the need for extra space, unfortunately. So, you know, what you could do is extend out over this existing flat roof which obviously houses was the garage but is now your utility home office and extended kitchen very nice downstairs too um, or you could go upstairs into the loft and that is you know an obvious thing to think about but actually very difficult to do on, on houses like this it's a modern house you know with all with modern attic trusses as well so those trusses are not great for for conversion um, and obviously a shallow pitch roof means that you'll be building dormer windows as well so complicated building job so of the two options, probably the easiest building one is to extend out over the existing former garage. And if I extended out over the garage, how much space would I, would I get from that? Uh, the issue with extending over garages is that they're designed for cars, so the space that you're going to create is long and narrow. There will be room for a master bedroom and an ensuite out there, but it's not going to be the beautiful spacious room that you might imagine. Um, the other option is to keep your lovely master bedroom that you've got already and sacrifice what is the box room at the moment for a really, really beautiful ensuite bathroom. So would you be happy to do that and keep two smaller bedrooms in the new extension? I think, to be honest, because I'm planning on staying here long term, I'd prefer to keep my existing master suite, um, add two additional bedrooms extending over the garage and then convert that bedroom into a bathroom. Um, what kind of cost and upheaval would I be looking at for something like that? You know, upheaval is going to be significant. You know, you, you're turning a bedroom into a bathroom, so all the, the various pipes and plumbing systems are going to have to go through existing spaces to do it. Additional cost is probably somewhere between five and ten thousand pounds, I think, as a result of that. Um, but I think you probably get a better space out of it. Um, you've got other th other factors as well. You know, obviously there's planning permission to think about. Um, this is a two-story side extension, effectively, from a planning perspective. So you'll need to get planning approval for that from the local authority. Don't think about that difficult, frankly. But you know, something th to think about. And you'll need some design work, not just to go through that process, but also to make sure that structurally it all works and somebody to really think through where things like the soil pipe are going to go and where you know these, these rooms are going to be well formed and well built. So that's the kind of the process really. Um, but I think the, you know, the end result, particularly is going to live here for a, for a long time to come, is well worth it. I can't quite visualise how that box bedroom is going to look as a bathroom. That's why we're here. Should we go and have a look? So here we are, and as you can see, this bedroom would make a fantastic master en suite. If you have your access straight here into the bedroom, you can have a sliding door, and that's going to make the most of every inch of the space you've got available. So what's on your wish list for a master bathroom? I would love a walk-in shower. That's one thing that I'm like, that's what I've always wanted. Um, also, I'm a, I'm a girl, I've got a lot of toiletries. Um, I could do with some really good storage. So once this door here has been blocked up, you're going to have a really good space here for a walk-in shower. Have an overhead shower, a handheld shower, even some body jets if you really want to create that spa-like experience. So while you're at it, it makes sense to get your builder to factor in some alcove storage for you so you've got somewhere in the walls to pop your bottles that you're using. Um, to double up on storage, go for a double vanity unit behind you here. It's going to give you plenty of space to stow away all your lotions and potions. You can have a beautiful illuminated mirror above it. Um, slightly less glamorous, but Toilet wise, I'd recommend putting it on that wall. Um, Jason mentioned the cost of moving your soil pipe can be quite considerable. So by having it on what is an exterior wall already, that's gonna help keep that cost down. So what do you think, how does that sound as a layout? That sounds perfect. I'm quite excited about it now. 
Um, where do I start though? I think that's a question a lot of people have got and the best thing to do is head on a website like Checker Trade, find a builder in the area that you want to work with. This kind of job's going to need lots of different trades so you need to find a good builder who can coordinate it. They'll be able to call in a structural engineer, a plumber and a designer if you need them. They'll know good people to work with so it's the obvious place to start. Perfect. <laughs> If you've already created your dream home, then why not enter the Real Homes Home and Garden of the Year Awards? You could even win £1,000 worth of John Lewis vouchers. To be in with a chance of winning, all you need to do is go to realhomes.com forward slash award and send us some pictures of your house. Stay tuned for our £1,000 armchair giveaway, but now it's time for me to share my insider know-how on furnishing your home for less. There's nothing quite like the feeling of saving money. And one of the best ways to do that when you're buying items from your home is to look for online clearance events. John Lewis has huge clearance sales that launch twice a year, in January and June, so we're due for one to go live any day now. The items are typically divided into three categories. You've got items that are discontinued, ones that are just on a special promotion, and also ones that might have a slight imperfection that doesn't affect their use, but means that their price is reduced. Furniture Village is another store that has great clearance section and theirs is both online and in store. They basically sell off X display items at up to 50% off the price, so you can get furniture but you can also get accessories as well. I took a look this morning and found this gorgeous two-seater velvet sofa in mustard which you'll know is very on trend if you've been watching our colour wheel section and it's just £515 down from £990, so it's quite a saving. I love Made.com for design-led pieces and if you want something your friends are really going to drool over then it's the best place to look. Their clearance section has discontinued items on it. I found this beautiful pendant light in copper and it was only 139 down from 249 To be honest, the number of stores with clearance sections is pretty much endless from Oak Furniture Land to Habitat. All you need to do is make Google your friend and search for the store that you're thinking of buying at and clearance sale. So happy bargain hunting! If I've inspired you to get bargain hunting, make sure you check out the deals page of the Real Homes website. It's got the latest offers from around the web, so it's well worth looking at. Now, this weekend, I tried to tile a splashback in my bathroom, and let's just say it was more difficult than I expected. So now, renovation expert Jason Orm is going to explain why it's worth you and I employing a professional tiler. Jason, welcome back to the show. Today I'm going to be talking about tiling with you. So of all the trades we've talked about, I feel like I could tile myself. Why should I get a professional in? You know, you can do it yourself and actually people kind of spend their lives DIY tiling and do pretty reasonable jobs, like eight out of 10 kind of jobs, I would say. And I think anybody can pretty much get a tile onto a wall. The, the, the pro element of it, I think, is the finishing and the kind of the difficult bits of tiling, you know, so making sure that you know, tiles are nicely cut, that they're kind of cut carefully and cut equidistantly and all those kind of things that most DIYers who've got time pressures particularly will really struggle to do and plan out. So, so yes, you can do it yourself, but you won't do anywhere near as good a job as a pro. All right, you're persuading me to go professional. So how do I go about finding a tiler? So recommendations, the first point of call. So, you know, anybody who's done projects locally to you, your friends, family, neighbours, those kind of people would obviously, you know, give you a good recommendation of somebody. Um, builders, people in that builder network locally would be great as well. They all know each other. So if you could, you know, if you've got a builder you use, an electrician you use, then they'll, chances are they'll know a tiler, particularly plaster is no good tilers. Um, but lastly, kind of websites like Checker Trade obviously help you short circuit that. They give you quick recommendations recommendations and obviously every tiler who's on there writes a description of what they do and what they specialise in, where they are, maybe even how much they charge, you know, so you get much more of an idea, you can pre-vet them that way. So once I've found someone I'm happy to work with, do I need to know exactly what tiles I want and then do I buy them myself? So I think in most cases you would probably want to obviously definitely choose your own tiles and I think therefore, you know, probably buy them. You know, you can get trade discounts at the big tile sheds and actually if you're really good as a DIY, you can probably negotiate it yourself. I've done that a few times. But, you know, you, see, you won't save much money by getting them to buy the tiles for you. I think where you, 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 you are wise to let them buy the materials is through the adhesives and the grouts and the trims and all those kind of, kind of you know, ancillary objects that tilers need. Because obviously they, they, they like to use their own adhesives, the ones they've used time, time and again. They know how quickly they set, they know the stickiness of them. All those kind of things is, is really important important to a tiler, that's what makes or breaks a good job I think. So, so let them buy the kind of the mechanical elements of it and I think you really should buy the tiles. There are some really quirky laying patterns that you see on Instagram and Facebook, will they be happy to recreate those for me? 
they'll be happy, of course, to do them for you. Yeah, but I think my, my word of caution on those really is that, you know, tiling is something you're going to want to do probably every 10 years, every 15 years, isn't it, for a bathroom or kitchen makeover. Now, Instagram fashions move incredibly quickly, more so than regular interior fashions, actually. So, you know, just because you've seen something on Instagram doesn't mean it's going to look great in two or three years time. So I think most tilers would urge you to go for timeless looks rather than something that's faddy. And if I want to keep costs down, then what tile materials should I be looking for? So there's a lot of you know new emerging interesting materials in, in, in tiling. I think particularly porcelain is something that is, is really coming on stream that offers good value and good flexibility. So traditionally the, the choice was between kind of ceramics and then the kind of the, the natural stone at the, at the top end. And I think porcelain kind of bridges that gap a little bit because you get the, you get the variety of shade and, and format and obviously pattern and style as well. So you can go for anything from kind of almost like a polished concrete floor finish through to almost like a kind of stone style, even marble kind of style tile through porcelain it's relatively good value i mean don't forget on a kind of small bathroom you know you're not talking about great square meterage anyway so you can afford to spend a bit more but when you're doing a 100 square meter open plan kitchen extension then every penny counts so you need good value thank you jason that's great and uh, we'll see you next time when we're going to look at how to find a garden designer to work with if you love the neutral colours and natural textures that we looked at in our colour wheel section this week, you're going to love Decampling's home. The Instagram star let our renovation expert, Cyan Astley, take a look around. Come back afterwards and I'll be giving away a beautiful armchair and footstool worth £1,000. So this is your main living room. It's such a beautiful serene space i do like i do like things to be nice and calm I, yeah you know, i think because i'm quite creative my head's always full and i'm overstimulated most of the time so i like things to be when i'm at home to be nice and soothing <laughs> i love the floor it's my favorite thing in the house actually and um so that kind of is this starting point for this room is i love the natural victorian floorboards which are original and i just think they're naturally beautiful yeah. and again you haven't got to pay for a carpet and they're easy to clean so they've like ticked loads of boxes so that kind of started the idea that it would be, you know, we'd bring a lot of outdoor things indoors. So it's something I do in quite a lot of rooms really. I, lo I love blurring the boundaries between outside and inside. So I've got like a log as a coffee table. We've made the log pile here a feature. We put a little shelf into it for the for our gin. So you've got the, that's the gin <laughs> shelf. Yeah. That's our gin shelf as well. Yeah, woman after my own heart. The, it, that outside in and inside out, I know it's a trend at the minute, yeah. but it's really your core style, oh, isn't, isn't it? it? Anyway, yeah. that is your core style. Yeah. And, and the vast majority of the pieces here, actually, they could be in the garden room. Because they could be in your garden room, couldn't they? Oh. The people, yeah, yeah. So you could pick up the galvanised pot from the fireplace yeah. and put it out there in the garden, or wheel the the box that you've got with the DVDs in it. That could that could be outside. Yeah. It's been the toy mm. box in the past. Mm. Um, again, you know, it's a whole multi-purpose thing, you know, using things to work for you in lots of different ways, it saves you money, it's all about recycling as well these days, isn't it? So you don't, you know, you don't have to have individual things doing individual jobs, one thing can do lots of jobs yeah. for you. Do you think that this style, so having it very natural and organic, do you think that that gives a room longevity because you're not, in, you're not thinking about having to constantly update, do you think it's a more timeless it's very Design. time. It's yeah. very timeless, and what I've what we've tried to do is have again have it so all the things we've got in these rooms we can actually move from room to room. You know, so you can restyle your home using what you've already got. It's called shopping your home. We do yeah. it quite a lot. So, uh, but if you have a neutral base to start off with, again, I've gone for the, you know, the floorboards and got a nice high ceilings and nice big windows. It's a lot of light already. Mm. It also gives you a neutral backdrop for moving things around. So. Actually, all of these things in this room have been in different rooms at different times. If you've been inspired by our neutral theme this week, then we've got the perfect giveaway for you. We've teamed up with Venor to give away a Saloni armchair and poof in mink worth £1,045. To be in with a chance of winning, all you need to do is go to realhomes.com forward slash TV and answer this simple question. Which high street retailer did we reveal is launching its clearance sale next month? You've got until midnight on the 12th of June to enter, so good luck. Join us in two weeks time for tips on creating a family friendly kitchen, why walnut furniture is back in fashion, plus we put wipeable paints to the test so you don't have to. If you want more information on anything you've seen in this show, head to realhomes.com forward slash TV and don't forget to pick up a copy of Real Homes magazine. Happy homemaking.